Welcome to the Pitch Vision Academy Cricket Show, your guide, of course, to better cricket. Um, we're here for a little while to help you out and to help out the players that you coach. Who are we? Well, my name's David Hinchliffe. I look after things here and um, helping me to help you is the Director of Cricket at Millfield School. It's Mark Garraway. Hello, Garris. How's it going? Oh, good, thank you. Bit of rain uh, presently kicking around to the southwest, but I believe it's going to brighten up later because there's a bit of T20 action kicking around at the moment, and I'm looking to catch as much of that as possible. Yeah, fantastic. Um, not much happening uh, school-wise, though, is there? It's a it's a bit of a, a bit of a lull now, isn't it? Now you've in terms of school cricket. Now you've um, finished the school season. Yeah, it's more more watching mode now and yeah. uh, meeting up with players and prospective players, tracking some of the people that are already on the programme as well. So I've watched quite a few of those play the last uh, 10 days or so. So yeah, less throwdowns, more uh, observations in this phase of the year. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. It's quite an interesting uh, area for people, I suppose, you know, especially um, if you're looking to uh, strengthen a cricket team, you're looking for... Um, the right kind of player to bring into your team and all that kind of thing. So um, when it comes to sort of judging players, maybe that's a bit of, of a harsh word, but, you know, uh, analysing players, observing players and deciding whether they're going to be the kind of fit for your team, um, there's there's quite a few things to look at. I mean, the obvious things is the uh, how they're performing on the field, but th there's lots of other things involved in that as well. And... Um, especially these days, there's a lot of talk about character and mindset and all those side of things as well. So when when you come to sort of looking for players to potentially fill places in sides, whether that's in schools or in representative teams or or, or even at first class level, what, what kind of things are you looking for? Well, I think it varies really depending. I mean, it, you have to apply it to your own uh, your own world, really. So, in my world, we've got two entry points where we're, we're looking to attract people into the school. One is uh, as they transition from under thirteen into under fourteen cricket, and the other one is when they transition from under sixteen into under seventeen cricket. And and that's really a, a school e academic educational based thing rather than a, a cricket one. So, I have to. Um, I have to adapt my models of what I want according to that. And of course, the other thing is because uh, the schools, uh, the, somewhere like Millfield, it, it's an expensive place to send your kids. Um, it, it also narrows the field down significantly, even with scholarships, which in our case are, um, you know, not particularly massive scholarships. There are a lot of schools that offer 100% uh, scholarships. We are not in, in that uh, ballpark, really. So people have to want to come to us initially and I think that's a, a good starting point you know many a time I've started conversation with players in my previous roles around county cricket and professional cricket and then um, even when it came to international cricket with Ireland actually um, and, and the crucial thing is that they want to come to you and uh, uh, and that is the, the first and foremost thing because if they're interested in what you're doing then you've got a bit of a hook in there to start off with and, and also um, they're showing a desire to want to add to the programme as opposed to just come in and, and take so that's the first thing I look for and I suppose that goes into, into character and that wouldn't be too dissimilar I suppose to club cricket uh, in many ways I think the person wants to have to come to you as opposed to you having to go to them uh, I've signed a couple of players purely for money in club cricket in South Africa uh, and one of them worked and the other one didn't but both of them initially were me chasing them and I think uh, it's important that the player is, is showing a, a pull and a draw into you as a cricket club or a school or whatever the case may be yeah, and a lot of those times, certainly from my point of view, when a, when you're thinking about players, you you start with um, players who want to have the right level of performance, of course. But I think it's almost as important, maybe even slightly more important, to have people who would fit in with the team. Because um, if you, especially if you're bringing people in, you can sometimes put noses out of joint of other, of other people saying, "Well, I don't know why we brought him in. We're perfectly good with our current whatever that is, opening bowler." opening batsman wicket keeper whatever um so it is a tough one to uh, at club level to to get right if you bring someone in purely on the numbers and then it turns out that they haven't they don't fit in with the ethos of the team or that whatever that is and 
even if you take the constraints away, which you can't, of course, but even if you sort of ignore the constraints or you, you, you've accepted the constraints and you're working within them, there is that, um, th there is that element of the unknown of, is this person going to integrate well with the team? Is this person going to be the type of person that we want around? Um, or is this person, do we really not care about them being around? All we care about is their runs and wickets because that, that second one is not a very long-term solution, is it? Well, it, it, I suppose the answer is historically probably no, if we look at some uh, uh, examples of that um, from the fairly recent past within cricket. But but equally, I think uh, whether you're talking about teams, whether you talk about friendship groups, whether you're talking about a team at work or a group at work that you're working um, alongside, it, it's about tolerance as well. And, you know, there isn't going to be a perfect fit uh, straight away or it's unlikely to happen because obviously your existing group have got their way of working, their way of communicating, their way of tolerating each other or accepting each other's differences. And so every time you bring somebody in from the outside, it's going to have a slightly unsettling uh, impact upon the existing group. I, I think that's fairly inevitable. But, um, you know, that can be worked around and, and often uh, people are a little bit standoffish when somebody comes into that that um, group initially, but soon they'll start to realise what uh, skills, attributes um, that that person's going to bring into you, your cricket team uh, and into the ethos uh, overall. And um, uh, going back to my previous point, if they really want to join you, then that's always a good starting point. And I think that the other people within the group generally see that in the way that the newcomer uh, is behaving and asking questions and, and whatever the case may be. Uh, and that helps to bring them on board as soon as possible, really. So uh, that transition could be made, made quite quickly. Um, I mean, going back to the school, in terms of our under 13, under 14, we, we're looking just to get a group of people in, really, um, uh, at that age group. And it's uh, the scholarships that we offer however small they may be, will be there to attract people into the school. And then we've got five years to develop them as individuals and as groups um, uh, so they can enjoy their cricket as best as possible. So uh, I'm not too fussed at the outset of what we get coming in um, because I think at that age in particular, people are pretty malleable uh, and we can work with them and uh, hopefully the culture will start to rub off on them as well. I wanted to talk to you, uh, Gareth, about um, a pitch vision product. Actually, we do um, talk about pitch vision uh, stuff quite regularly. Of course, we do. This is the pitch vision uh, cricket show, of course. But there's a new product uh, on the market from pitch vision called PV Match, which is a, a a tool for bringing scoring into the 21st century, if you like. So, um, certainly from um, your point of view uh, as a coach, I wanted to get a few ideas of of some of the things that scoring means in these days and and how it sort of that kind of tying scoring and video into your program your coaching program is is something that that can help you quite a lot because of course pv match um allows you not only to score the game on on an app for a, a mobile device or a laptop but it also allows you to um video the game uh, and you can tie each delivery Every four, you know, every dot, whatever it is, every delivery is tied into a, a video of that delivery, and that's all done through the um, the PB Match system. So, uh, I know you have um, done similar things like this in the past um, at, at various levels. So, um, how important is that idea of being able to tie in sort of actual video and and performance to individual players uh, during games as well as during training, which is the idea of PB Match. Well, I think it's crucial and, and certainly, I mean, we've got a match analysis system at school and obviously through the ECB in particular, I was involved in the first starting off really of those um, those systems way back in, in 2004, we started to work with um, a company out of New Zealand to do exactly the same thing. And, and you know, whilst it's fantastic to have video capture opportunity in the, in the nets, the, the crucial time is when you're competing real out, out in the middle and and what that enables you to do is to really see yourself under pressure see yourself um in competitive mode and and then you know from that those imageries that you have up on the screen from the stats that you have uh, you can get an incredible amount of information that can then be taken back into the nets to to further develop your game so um it would be safe to say that probably the match analysis element of that and, and having the the vision 
from a match is something that you know 10 15 years ago we could only get from television um, but now it's available to to everybody club schools and um, around the world to be able to access this which is invaluable when it comes to player development and those stats really are good. I mean, I know you know we're both we're both men who uh, who love a, a, a stat and a spreadsheet. But um, having those, um, I, I know I know that you've been uh, looking this year quite a lot at um, the averages and, and strike rates of different shots that players have, which is a fantastic uh, way to go about it because you, to get the overall picture of somebody, it's it's sort of diluting it a bit, isn't it? But if you're getting um, if you're getting a uh, a picture of specific shots and what happens in specific shots with specific people it allows you to be a lot more focused and and work on those things a lot more specifically doesn't it rather than say oh well he's averaging 45 this year so he he must be a good batsman next yeah and you're absolutely right you know averaging 45 in most forms of cricket is fantastic um but when you start to break it down you realize in match play that actually there are areas without too much work outside in nets or in drills uh, that you could actually push that average up quite significantly and make the bowler's job and the opposition captain's job much more difficult. And then obviously flipping it back on its other head, uh, you, you start to see in stats some trends about bowlers. And, and one of the things that, that used to come out, and I know we talk about it a lot on this show, but it's the beginning of the over and the end of the over and really making sure that it's just, yeah, but sort of... Um, strategically you've got a plan to how you're going to put that over together and it was something that I only really got my head around through working with the best bowlers in the world you know and I'm talking about listening to people like Malcolm Marshall and working alongside somebody like Shane Warne who first came up with those ideas many moons ago but now it's more commonplace in in our speak as coaches and as players and the club and the and the school world but now you've got the opportunity to put some stats behind it back it up with video and all of a sudden you can then go away and start to practice differently and adjust your mindset to get a better result at the start and the end of the over and that's just one example i mean there's there's hundreds of things i mean i was at the the world cup final for the women's on sunday and it was fascinating because there were 42 back foot drives played off a spin over the course of the the game by both sides, which accrued 12 runs. And every time somebody went back to back foot drive, it all, you know, I'd sort of like let out a blooming sigh because the game was going to go nowhere. It was almost like a, a breather ball, whereas there could be a better option available, which asks more questions of a bowler and more questions of a captain with uh, video and with stats going alongside that then you can really break that down and you can just pick out back foot drive versus spin and you will see all the numbers come up you will see the video that's associated with you with it and then you can show your players and say well you know is there another way and of course the first thing i do is go well of course we can do something else about it. we can pull it and um, yeah. all of a sudden they've come up with that solution based off of good stats good good imagery and uh, you don't have to do too much of a, of a coach and we all know that any idea that comes from a player rather than a coach is more likely to be adhered to and, and be developed fully and you can also see how you know in this world where you know the the idea that a, one specific technique is is um is correct or incorrect is is gone um you can also see if, if you can tie video to to what a player is doing in a game and you can see something that make they, they're doing that technically, you know, maybe 50, 60 years ago, people would try and hammer out of them. You can say, well, look at the outcomes this, you know, this player's getting by doing this. You know, that's that seems to be working pretty well. And instead of sort of working on a theoretical level where you say, well, you know, if you do this, then this will happen and then that's, that's more likely to happen and then therefore you'll, you'll get a low score or you'll get out or, you know, bowling, you won't bowl as fast or whatever it is. You can... You can see that you can see that live in a game and you can pick out those things which you think might actually be causing a problem compared to the things which you theoretically think might cause a problem yeah very much so and i think initially when we did video analysis way back in the early 2000s 
um, people looked at it as a very negative thing. So I remember my first time of having video analysis, yeah. people would go and just look at the ball that they got out. I mean, yeah. that was the commonplace. So I set up an, a, a set of guidelines, really, for the Somerset team that, yeah, of course, you can go and have a look at the ball that got you out. But before you do that, you need to have pulled out two bits of information that can inform future uh, performance before you then look at the inevitable end result, which is you know the the delivery that got you out. And we've become far better at pulling out positives from video. Um, you know, if you remember back to the old days of level one and level two, and in particular uh, coaching over here, I remember we used to put a lad out. It was Matt Wood who now coaches at Nottinghamshire. Mm. I saw last week who's a who's a great lad. We used to put his video up on the up on the screen, and then every coach in the room would just pick them to bits. Well, I think we've gone beyond that. Um, and we realise that there are some differences in the way that people go about it. There's some fundamentals that uh, are associated with strong performance, but equally we're getting better at seeing the positives in in a uh, a piece of video, especially out in the middle. I mean, how oh, yeah. invaluable is that? Um, um, before we then go to the, OK, negative. But equally, with a bit of software like this, if we do think that there's a trend that's happening in somebody's downfall as a batter or a trend that's happening in somebody's downfall in, in being able to put an over together as a bowler, then you can just choose those specifics and see how real that trend is in relation to what you perceive in your head. And if it is the same, then obviously there's some great work that we can go off and do in the nets. Yeah, that point about look, looking at um, how you got out is, you know, that's that's even true, you know, at club level with guys who aren't necessarily, but getting instant access to their videos. Um, and I'm sure when PV Match becomes a lot more uh, popular around the world, that, that that's the one thing that people want to know about first. But um, it, that is only one piece of information. It's It's a highly influential piece of information on your game, but it is only one piece of information. If you bat for a, a, a hundred balls well even if you have a you know a, a not great innings and you bat for 10 15 20 balls it's still only one ball out of all those balls where you get out to it's I, I always say to people who are talk about how they got out of the weekend I say to them okay but how did you bat up to the point that you got out and um if you can if you can focus on the whole innings and not just the way that the innings ended that will give you a lot more information than just saying, oh, well, you know, I played a stupid shot there and now I really regret it and now I need to change my technique. That's that's not the most useful way to go about things. But saying to yourself, how did I bat? I actually bit batting pretty well up on that, until that point. So, you know, I'm quite happy overall. Gives you something a bit more to uh, to hang on to for your confidence and, and also perhaps some things to work on in the training ground. I think the other thing that particularly the live streaming element uh, has of watching yourself play out in the middle is that you don't just always focus on you being in your stance facing the ball or you being at the end of your run up facing mm. the ball. As a batter in particular, it's what you're doing in between balls, which is really important as well. And um, we don't get that in nets, do we? Unless we really specifically set up a net to build in the time lapses in between each yeah. ball. And it's never um, the same. And it's never the same, is it? So you get to see that. And often batters are undone, not by the ball that's being bowled at them, but by the fact that they are, aren't actually in that moment at that time and they're still dwelling or they're future mm. projecting or whatever. And often their physical behaviours will give the game away a little bit. So that is the real strength of watching yourself play on, you know, in, in real time. As out in the middle, under competition, um, and seeing how that you manage yourself, and uh, you know the the best players in the world. You know, I just think of Alistair Cook and the way that he's probably in my time of coaching the the best manager of the in between each ball that I've worked alongside. Um, and I have to say that I don't think anybody's given him that bit of information or shown him what to do I think that's just something that he's he's done but equally if you've got access to seeing yourself on the on a screen in between each ball you can go actually that's a little bit different to what Alistair Cook does and as a result I'm not ready for the next ball and that sort of thing is is massive you know not just comparing the shots and trying to compare yourself against the world's greatest but also the the pre-delivery stuff the in between each ball which you don't get unless you've got a system such as this which uh, gives you that capacity yeah precisely so if you are if you are listening to this and thinking oh pitch vision match sounds alright to me you know it sounds like it's something I could work with at the level that I'm working at you know whether you're a coach or an administrator or 
uh, player still a player you know there's all there's something in there that that live streaming thing as well that's really you know everybody loves that you know because you've got especially at club cricket you've got people all over the world probably who uh, have been involved in the club at one stage or another and they they want to know what's going on on a saturday afternoon so uh, if you can if you can spread spread the club around the world uh, to the to all the expats then uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a fantastic uh, tool for pr- promoting the club as well so it's not just for for coaches and players it's, it's it's a great thing for the whole club that can be used you know all, all through the week and especially on a Saturday afternoon when you're romping to victory hopefully well we've had we've had some incredible numbers on our viewing feeds um, you know and again when you break those down you're absolutely right you know we live in a in a world now where people get on a plane and move to to foreign climbs don't they and, and work over there and uh, what better thing to do is to have that um, have the streaming thing going on in the corner of your computer when you're meant to be working over in somewhere else in the world it's fantastic um, but that's certainly what we've seen from a number of our parents and uh, and ex pupils at the school that the numbers have been startling uh, of people that have wanted to tune in and and watch uh, watch some of the 2020 games that we've streamed online let's answer a um, a question from a listener now um, this we normally have two but we wanted to get we want to talk about PV match because we're excited about that so um, thanks for listening uh, to, to that and hopefully you got some useful information out of that and maybe even you were tempted by PV match but let's let's go back to the uh, original format of the show which is to uh, answer a, a question and it, I did get a very very long question this week so it's definitely worth uh, worth a, a proper chat uh, on this one Garris it's uh, our, our friend our, our new friend uh, Pradeep and Pradeep uh, has written in with a, a question saying uh, I'm originally from Nepal and I'm currently living in France and for the last couple of years I've met with many English language and sports teachers to see if a cricket program could be conceivable in schools and finally last week I got a positive answer the local school would like me to come and run a few cricketing sessions with their students, but my challenge is I've never coached someone who's never played, seen or heard of cricket. <laughs> In the past, I've coached a few players to refine their skills and techniques, but that's it. I'll have four classes with 24 kids in each class and the kids are 11 to 12 years old. The teachers want me to spend a couple of hours with each class to initiate and run a short cricket match in a gymnasium. Can you help me with some guides to run these sessions properly? so that the kids can find it exciting and ask their teachers for more cricket. If I go back to um, how to bowl a ball correctly or how to hold a bat or different kinds of shots, it can get quite boring. So what can I do? What kind of match can I run for an hour that can be fast and also involve a lot of players? I would really appreciate your help. Big challenge for Pradeep. What do you think, Garris? Well, firstly, I, I think it's fantastic that he's... Uh convince people who wouldn't be used to cricket to to give it a go and um he must have sold a fairly good image of the game uh, to be able to do that so first thing i would say is you know that image that you created has obviously uh, brought these people in and and uh, uh, got them to in, to be excited and enthusiastic about it so uh, i would build something off the back of that so depending on what you've you've presented to them or how you've spoken about it i would gear your your sessions uh off of that as best as possible now uh, i should imagine that it's the the key things that you want to get out is the athleticism and movement the uh the ability to strike a ball hard and and far um and uh and also to be able to propel a ball fast and make it do funny thing so uh, the bowling side of things is generally the thing that say my dad who's worked with kids starting off has gone to first but I think in this context bearing in mind that you're going to be on your own I would say focus mostly on on the striking and the fielding element of of the game now it's unlikely that these kids haven't had some exposure to striking sports and in the, the past you know whether it be tennis or hockey or whatever the case may be um, you know, they would have definitely been exposed to some catching and some invasion sports in in the in the past. You know, through rugby and football, uh, which is obviously two very strong sports in in France. So I would I would really go along the striking and I would go along the uh, the fielding bit initially before you start to introduce the the bowling. Um, so I would steer away from having a proper game of cricket if you can, and think about some games which involve hitting the ball hard, not particularly with any technique, 
but encouraging people to hit the ball strongly and also to learn to stop the ball. And then you can stop that game every now and again and introduce a drill to bring in things like a long barrier or to teach people how to be ready to stop the ball uh, at point of contact or be uh, teach somebody how to catch properly. So I would play a big game, maybe a stationary ball hitting off the top of a, a stump or a cone to start off with lots of activity, a bat inside, they get one hit and then rotate around, building in the stopping, building in the catching and building in the throwing elements because you'll be going on, on games that they would have played previously. Something like stool ball, for example, is played quite significantly over in France. So the more you can draw upon their previous experience, the better initially, and then you can start to build in the nuances of the game. Yeah, we've had great. I don't know how much room he'll have to do this, but we've had great success with them with all levels of players of, of junior players um, with the diamond cricket game, Gareth, which I'm sure you're familiar with. You know, having four yeah. four sets of stumps and, and uh, making it a little bit more rounders like, I suppose, um, or baseball like, um, and uh, not needing to worry about teaching someone how to bowl. But uh, still having lots of people striking the ball a lot because, you know, you've got four batters at any one time and um, always, always crazy things happen during that game. And it's, it's always good fun, even if there's not a huge amount of, you know, keeping your elbow up and um, bowling with a straight arm going on. But that's, that's not the goal, as you said, Gareth. The goal is to get people loving the, co- the basic concept of the game, which is, uh, you know, the running... Throwing, stopping, catching, hitting, and doing doing those very sort of simple skills in a cricketing context and building up a, a kind of love for doing it. And I can tell you now that every, almost every single time I walk out to a jun- junior training session, whether there's three kids there or 30 kids there, always the first question is, are we going to do diamond cricket today? So it obviously has some kind of pull on, on the uh, on on the younger players for some reason. I don't exactly know what it is, other than it's just great fun. Uh, but maybe that's all it is. I don't know about you, Gareth. What what uh, what kind of um, impact has Diamond Cricket had had on you with those kind of guys? Yeah, definitely. I, I think Diamond Cricket is is magnificent because, as you say, it keeps lots of batters involved. Um, another great game which does a very similar thing would be Pavilion Cricket. Um, and pavilion cricket is a game where uh, you have a bat inside and a, a bowl inside. The coach is the bowler or underarm feeder. Um, every time you hit the ball, it's got to go in the games that I've played. It's got to go in front of the square because you want people to have the intention to hit with a relatively straight bat. So uh, without teaching them that, I just I make sure that they hit the ball in front of the square as much as possible. Then they run 22 yards and, and the field inside have to get the ball back to the coach. And if they get the ball back to the coach before the person has run the 22 yards, then they're out. They can obviously be caught and they can obviously be bowled. Uh, as well and there's an in pavilion and an out pavilion and if you do happen to get out you go and sit in the out pavilion but you also create a boundary and again I put my boundary fairly straight again no teaching of the shots but just there's a straight boundary and if a ball is struck into that boundary and everybody from the out pavilion goes back into the in pavilion um, and it gets really fantastic especially when you've got one or two batters who are batting at the end because they're obviously running constantly which is getting them tired which brings in error but equally if they get hold of one and they knock the ball into the boundary area then they get all of their teammates back into the game again which creates heck of a lot of excitement (laughs) it's a fantastic fielding game it's a fantastic batting game it's very similar to diamond cricket it's all inclusive but it you know those two have been the staple diet really for for me when i've coached um on some of the holidays that we go to with with the young ones in particular and it always goes down well yeah exactly and as you say gareth it's it's you can still get in things that will help people with the game that they're playing um, and they're also cricketing skills. So if you're if you're getting that pull of, oh, I should be teaching them how to do things properly here, which it, everybody gets that, don't they? You know, you don't want to just be the bloke chucking the tennis ball. You actually want to be helping someone in some way as well. So to, to be able to sort of sneak in a, a, a catching technique here or a, a holding the bat slightly differently there or... or um, a long barrier somewhere else. If you can get them in, in, and they can see that working, and it, it improves their experience within that game, 
then they're learning those cricket skills as well as learning as well as having fun and that's sort of the, the sweet spot all around because it makes you happy and it keeps them happy so um but 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 always keep the game going you know it, I've, I've seen in the past i'm sure you've seen it as well gareth great long lectures from coaches about all kinds of things and um that's that's one of the worst things you can do if you're trying to infuse kids is, is sit them all down and give them a nice long lecture about all the things that they're doing wrong Definitely. And I, and I think a game like that with two coaching points over the course of its duration um, is a fantastic coaching session in, in itself, particularly with people that have started up the game for the first time mm. uh, or maybe having one of their first few sessions. Um, if people can go away with two coaching points and have fun and be active, then you've pretty much hit a winner as a coach. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. And that is just about all we've got time for on the show this week. Now, as you know, if you're a regular listener, uh, this point in the show is where we normally decide on the winner of the online coaching course from Pitch Vision Academy at pitchvision.com. Um, but of course, we only had one question this week. So I think, Gareth, if you're in agreement, we can uh, we can automatically give the online coaching course to Pradeep and perhaps he can pick something that will help him with his coaching. That's exactly exactly what I was thinking. You know, is there a course on there that you think best demonstrates, um, you know, some of the skills that you're going to require to play some of these games that we talked about, Pradeep? And um, and if so, then uh, use it wisely. And good luck. Make sure you keep us up to date. I mean, it's a fantastic yeah. thing. Uh, France is very close to my heart. I love I love going to France. And in, and in fact, there's some brilliant cricket coaches in France that I've. I've worked with David Bordes being my favourite French uh, cricket um, coach. So uh, maybe Pradeep, if you have the opportunity to have a look on Facebook for David Bordes, then uh, he might give you a little heads up under some of the things that's worked for him over there as well. There's not many people, Gareth, in the world who could um, come up with a list of French coaches and then pick their favourite one. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's quite the uh, that's quite the badgering there. Well done. Now, for anybody, <laughs> for anybody else who's listening to the show and we're thinking uh, they want to um, send in a question to us and uh, maybe uh, alongside getting answered, maybe win that prize like Pradeep did, how could they get in touch with us to do that? They could give us a call on 0203 239 7543 or drop us an email on coach at pitchvision.com. That's correct. You can also get us through uh, social media. There is um, the um, messaging system, of course, on pitchvision.com, which you can uh, head over to find out about. Just search for um, Pitchvision Academy and you can message us there if you've got an account with us and it's free to get one. And if you want to use any other social media, there is Facebook, facebook.com slash pitchvisionacademy and Twitter at pitchvisionacad. You can subscribe to the show to listen every week. If you want to do that, you search for Pitch Vision Academy in your favourite podcast app, and that should come up. Tap on subscribe, and uh, you're away to go there. And uh, if you want to get all the old shows, all the old show notes, um, or just keep up to date with all the articles and things, you can do all that over at pitchvision.com slash academy. Click on the podcast link for all the details there. That's all for this week. Uh, we hope you listen next week, where also we hope Labels will be back from his uh, one-week holiday. Uh, until then, have a good week. Cheers, Gareth. Cheers, fella. Cheers, fella.